If you're into home security, how would you like to retire with greater security, not having a house payment at retirement? We're gonna talk about that today with our expert guest, Susan Law Liberty. So hang on. Welcome, I'm Kenneth Vanessi with KeyToVegasHome.com right here in Las Vegas, powered by EXP Realty, and also the author of the second book, Inside Secrets 2, what I wish my agent would have told me about retiring using a reverse mortgage. Each week we'd bring on an expert guest and we're excited about today's guest because we're gonna hear a story that Susan has that is literally going to help you understand the value of using a reverse mortgage at retirement. Today's expert guest is Susan Law Liberty from Longbridge Financial LLC. And we're excited to have you here today, Susan. Welcome to Inside Secrets 2. Thank you, Kenneth. Hey, so we were talking off air and you told me a story that I just said, we have to tell this story about how you got into the business and how you helped somebody at retirement. Susan, can you share that story with the listeners? Sure, absolutely, Kenneth. So the reason I got into reverse mortgage is um, I worked in the mortgage industry, working with forward traditional mortgages as well as reverse mortgages. But um, I quickly started seeing that our seniors were getting left behind. Um, a lot of people don't have um, family and they kind of get lost between the cracks somewhere. So um, I really just started loving working with the senior population and forming relationships with them and um, just quickly decided that that is where my focus was going to be, um, not only to help them financially be more successful in retirement, but also to be a resource for other needs that they might have. Um, hence, you know, networking and finding um, other people in the community that love to work with the seniors as I do. Yeah. So tell us that story that the lady, this hold on to your hats, people. This is going to be a possible tearjerker, but help people understand how you were able to help somebody that literally was living in their kitchen. Yeah. So this was um, early on and when I became a loan officer. I've been in the mortgage industry for quite a while, but I'm doing a lot of business development. So um, this was earlier on when I uh, became a loan officer. One of the first loans I did, or one of the first few that I did, um, I met a woman who um, lost her husband. Mm. She had a huge house, like a 4,500 square foot home. Um, she was only, her, her only surviving family was her son, who was, um, you know, in his late, late 40s, early 50s. And um, after she lost her husband, her son was trying to help her refurbish her house, get it, um, you know, to where they could sell it and they could downsize and uh, she would have a smaller place, something more manageable um, physically and financially. So um, kind of fast forward, the house had been almost gutted. He, the son, had um, uh, scaffolding all over the place. The floors were ripped up. It was quite a mess. Um, my my customer started getting behind on her mortgage. She had lost her husband's income. You know what that means? You know, a husband, a spouse, you lose a spouse, you lose half of your income in most cases. They didn't have a lot of retirement, pension, savings. So she started getting behind on her mortgage. When I met her, um, she was on her third forbearance and uh, she just couldn't survive. The, um, the, the institution that had her forward mortgage, I won't name names, but they were kind of chomping at the bit to take over her home because her forward mortgage was only $30,000, wow. but she didn't make the payment, right? So the house was worth close to 700. So that was huge for them to be able to come and take this property that they could resell for a lot more money um, with a loan that she only owed 30,000. She was at this point pretty getting very sick, disabled almost. She couldn't get upstairs to her bedroom. So she was actually living in a recliner chair in her kitchen 
the whole house was torn apart around her. So it was um, just heartbreaking. And if we couldn't get this loan done by the end of that year, this bank was going to come in and foreclose on her. She had no more chances with forbearances. So um, we we got it done. We got it done for her. So I think that is one of the most um, just heartbreaking stories for me. You know, where would she have gone? Her Her son was living with her. So there wasn't a chance for her to go and live with him at his place. He was living there and trying to fix up the house and get it ready for sale. And then he had a stroke oh. in the middle of all of this. I forgot to mention that. So he had a stroke and he went into assisted living and he was no more help to her at all. He couldn't work. He was trying to help her out as much as he could financially. So in the end, we got it done. And, and um, she you know, is living in the home today. Well, and that's what people don't realize, and they, especially being in the real estate industry, um, one of the things that people always talk about is uh, people that are in foreclosure or already received a notice or um, behind on a payment to get in there right away and sell the house, get out of that pressure of potentially losing the house to foreclosure. But for a woman that had, and let me get this right, she only owed about thirty thousand on her forward mortgage. Is that correct? Correct. You're a traditional mortgage. And owned a house that literally was uh, almost seven hundred thousand. I mean, at the end of the day, there's so much equity that you can turn into liquidity using reverse mortgage, but yet. Who's telling these people this kind of information, life-saving information, information that literally can give you such great security at retirement and move away from the pressure and the pain and this literally the fear of losing your home to now you being the bank and someone paying you. So obviously she got the reverse mortgage. So in her situation, how was that changed now? So no longer help us understand what ended up happening with her situation. So um, she is still living or was still living in the home. Um, she had money now to pay her taxes and insurance. Um, she had that extra income, that cushion, more home health care. She was getting provided with better home health care. Um, and I say she's still living in the home today. She has recently exited the home. Um, so she has gone into assisted living and now still has that money to access for a little while. She's going to have to sell the house eventually. She can only be gone from the residence for 12 months. And that's um, that that's in all. Um, normally at six months, you get two three month extensions. If you file for those extensions, it gives you a total of 12 months. So eventually she will put that property up for sale, pay off the reverse mortgage, take the rest of the proceeds to continue to pay for her, um, her assisted living that she's in now. And I want people to understand what Susan just said. And that was, she has the ability to sell her house, pay off the reverse mortgage and still use the income. How many times, Susan, have you and I heard the bank owns the house? When oh. you die, yeah. the bank gets the house. Help people understand what is true about that and what is actually happening when you do a reverse mortgage. Yeah. So most of the people I talk to, that's their perception is that, oh, the bank gets the house in the end. No matter if there is a ton of equity left over, the bank takes it. That is so far from the truth. So. Um, the heirs or the person selling the home, the if you know, case this this customer of mine that ended up going to assisted care, she has the option to sell it. So the heirs or that person living the borrower has three options. They can either sell the house, pay off the reverse mortgage, take the rest of the proceeds for their for them. Um, they could well if the heirs are the ones taking over, the borrower's gone. They could simply um, get their own loan to pay off the reverse mortgage and keep that property uh, for themselves, a rental property, vacation home, whatever. Or they could simply give it back to the bank if they just don't want to deal with it. And that's the reality of what people that actually have a reverse mortgage and what can potentially happen versus what you hear 
people talk about. And I, matter of fact, I was just actually posting a video that we had done and talking about reverse mortgage. And the first thing that someone commented on was that in my post was, well, aren't you just helping people that are in a desperate situation lose their home and give it to the bank? And I'm like, how did that message even come across in what I was sharing? But that's a lot of the rumor mill that people have when it comes to reverse mortgage, that you're just going to, the bank's going to take your home. You're going to lose everything. Your heirs are, don't have any opportunities. And literally at the end of the day, the people that used reverse mortgage were caught in this spiraling down episode, which is not true. It is not true at all, especially for like this lady who is still using the income from her reverse mortgage to offset her lifestyle at retirement. Now, with that being said, Susan, you and I know, yes, there isn't foreclosure on a reverse mortgage if you do a couple of things. What are those two things that people need to do so that they don't ever have to worry about losing their home? Right. So yeah, again, another misconception kind of just as you explained. So if you, as long as you, you have to keep up with your taxes and insurance, that's so important. It's just like if I were fortunate enough to own my home outright without a mortgage, guess what? I've still got taxes and insurance to pay. I've got to keep up with my homeowner association dues if there are any. And if I don't, even if I don't have a mortgage, guess what? They're going to eventually foreclose on me. So the same goes for the reverse mortgage. It is no different. Um, again, they've got to keep up the property. This is an FHA loan. There are standards. They can't let the house just be dilapidating around them, right? They've got to keep it up on the outside as well. Yeah. And especially um, talk a little bit about HOAs because that's also plays into this somewhat. So I mean, obviously, if you're living in a home and it's in an HOA, you're going to have to keep the standards up, painted, maintained, and so on and so forth. So how does HOAs play into those fees also? Um, well, um, they still have to pay their homeowner insurance. There's That does not, um, it's not dismissed, right? It's just right. like, it, it's a property upkeep. It's a pro you have to pay your taxes and insurance and homeowners association dues. So I don't know if I understood you properly. On well, that. yeah. And it just the, the question is because obviously in Nevada, HOAs can foreclose on a home for not being uh, not paying their association dues. So but here's what people are not hearing when we talk about having to pay your taxes, having to pay your HOA, your insurance fees. You are getting money. You have decided when you done a we have done a reverse mortgage to get funds three different ways. Susan, help people understand how they can get those funds so they don't have to worry about the taxes and the insurance stuff like that. It's not like they just don't have no more money now. A reverse mortgage allows them access to that liquidity. How can they use that for that purposes? What are the three ways that they can use those? Yeah. So um, if they have a mortgage on the home, and a lot of that's another misconception, people think, well, I have a mortgage, so I can't do a reverse mortgage. As long as there's enough equity in the home for us to pay off the mortgage, like we did in my customer's um, situation that we spoke of earlier, we pay off the reverse or, or pay off the forward mortgage. We And if there's money left over, it can go into a credit line. That credit line grows from year to year. And a lot of people do not know about that. They could take a lump sum at, at closing if they wanted to do repairs on the house, leave the rest of the more uh, the rest of the um, equity in the credit line to grow from year to year when they need it. They could set up a payment plan to where they are drawing money from that line of credit to help them supplement their income every month. $500, uh, $1,000, $2,000, whatever that may be, they can set that up to just go directly into their checking account like another social security check. Yeah. So yeah. there are many options um, with the line of credit. You know what? Um, 
I don't want to, I, I, I want people to contact you, Susan. I want to make sure that there's a lot of information that obviously we could spend hours talking about this. You and I have discussed this um, yeah. quite a bit, but at the end of the day, I want them to contact you because people need to know the truth about what they could do with reverse mortgage. And also I want them to ask you about purchasing a home using reverse mortgage. We can dive into that on another broadcast. I'd love to have you come back and explain that, but I want to have people reach out to you. Susan, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, my cell phone. And I know you have that information. If you don't want to contact me by cell, shoot me an email. I'm uh, more than happy to sit down and educate, go through everything, tell you the pros and the cons. Sometimes it's not a perfect fit for somebody. Um, rates, it doesn't matter what the rates are. We can, there's reverse mortgages work most of the time. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. And, that, and, and we're going to make sure that we put all of Susan's contact information so that they can reach out to you. But I want to tell people, listen, the reason I wrote this book, Inside Secrets 2, was because when I got this information about using a reverse mortgage to help people at retirement, either upgrade their lifestyle, buy a new home or, you know, downgrade from a big home to a smaller home, something that works for them and use a reverse mortgage. This for me was the opportunity to help people understand that at retirement, you can have greater security. You can know that that nest egg being your home and the equity can be turned into liquidity and used to help you at retirement. So all I ask you to do is if you would like to get a copy of this book, go to keytovegashome.com. There's under the homeowner tab, you'll see inside secrets. There's one and two. Just click the link. If you want a hard copy, I'll mail one to you. If you want to just download a digital, it's for free. I want to get you this information and I want you to know that there is hope for your retirement in the the future. And I want you to connect with Susan. I really appreciate your time, Susan, today. And I appreciate the fact that you're setting the, the stage for people to enjoy greater security at retirement and using a reverse mortgage to do just that. Susan, thank you for thank being on the show. And again, if you are, have any questions for Susan, please call or email. The links are down below and do it today. Susan, thank you for being on the show. We're going to have you on yeah. again. And thank you for setting this, um, the stage straight for those people that want a reverse mortgage. Thank you, Kenneth. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for having me, the opportunity to get the word out there because just, there's just so many unknowns that people don't have any idea even exist as far as reverse mortgage. So thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. Don't forget, go to keytovegashome.com. Under the homeowner tab, click the link, get your book today, and make sure you give Susan a call today also. Thanks. We'll see you next time on Inside Secrets 2, what I wish my agent would have told me about reverse mortgages at retirement. Susan, thank you, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.